so welcome and uh, I thought well let's make a bit of a well it's not really a um, uh, an out of the ordinary video I mean it's not a servicing video but it is still a clock related video so uh, it's still in the theme of this channel but um, I thought I might give you a bit of insight into something I'm working on so um, for a long time now I've been trying to work out uh, and build up a like a resource about Smith's alarm clocks. Um, oh, I should have one right next to me, but I don't. Give me a second. So yeah, Smith's alarm clocks, uh, which were alarm clocks made by the company Smith's um, in the UK. Uh, and I've been trying to find... There's not much about them. Um, you know, a lot of stuff about Smith's clocks, because they're quite a popular collectible brand in, over here. But... Um, their alarm clocks, they made a lot of them, uh, I can't find much about it at all. So I'm bringing it upon myself to create a little bit of a resource about dating, identification, and just a, a big resource of all the models and stuff I can find. Uh, and I'm just doing it by myself, really. Um, and it, that involves, you know, a lot of the time buying clocks to work out more about them. So, uh, yeah, I've got here, this is my... Second oldest one from when's this from? December nineteen forty nine, which is not that old actually. Uh, and this one, nineteen seventy three, my uh, youngest one. So they did uh, undergo a few changes, but um, the movement inside them has stayed pretty much the same. Well, I mean, there's a lot of differences, but the layout and design overall is quite similar. So um. That's the part that I'm trying to work out. When did the movement changes take place, and what do the mysterious letter and number codes inside them mean? And there'd be something. There's something I've been on the lookout for a while, actually. And it is, if my eyes um, were uh, truthful, then this is something that I've been trying to find for a long time. Now, as you just saw, uh, both of these had the date stamped on the back of them. 1249, 1249 for December 49. And later on, they just had the year under the knob here, which says 73. If you get the light shines on it right, you can just about see it. But um, I've seen a few which don't have a date code on the outside. And there are quite a lot of discrepancies actually. For example, there's a whole era in the early to early fifth, throughout the fifties actually, of ones which have ER the Queen Elizabeth uh, monogram on the back. Well, not a monogram is it? I suppose it is. I don't know what it is. Little crest, a uh, little emblem with a crown, and the date codes all over the place. There's like letters and numbers and stuff on the back. Haven't been able to find one of those for a good price yet, but I did find. What I believe might be a slightly earlier one. If I can get this open. There we go. Which is one without a date code stamped on the outside. Look at this. Now, it's nothing out of the ordinary, uh, overall. I mean, it's, you know, literally uh, just a normal Smith's alarm. Although the base is one I haven't come across yet. I'm slightly worried about what it is shifting around inside of here. Something is moving around in there. I don't know what that is. But uh, it looks like it's still got its... Is this glass? I assume it's still the original glass. It's still this... Oh, it's a slightly paler shade of blue, actually, compared to the uh, other one here. But yeah, no external date code. Nothing there and nothing there. So that makes me think that it might be either from a period where they, a short period where they stopped doing it, or from a period that predates the date codes, which is probably mid 49. I think that's the earliest one I've ever seen. The paint overall is a bit rough, but I'd keep it original. And what's interesting is the base design. I believe this model. Uh, most of mine are New Dawns, which has this uh, die-cast base with a little fancy bit in the middle. 
but uh, this one is not I believe it's a different model and it might be called Gordon I don't I can't say for sure there was a later version called Gordon which had a different dial but this is like an earlier one I presume it was still called Gordon which is a nice and pleasant name for an alarm clock it's like a it's a human name uh, Gordon this is Gordon meet Gordon he's sitting over here on my uh, nightstand but what's interesting about it the base in particular is that it seems to be the same it is it's the same design as the gilbert base now this is a 1953 smith's gilbert alarm i don't know anything about it apart from it has the same dial and hands design and quite a lot i did a video on this actually comparing it to a normal smith's one to the american company gilbert and they made alarm clocks as well so uh yeah the base is something which uh is, is the, I think it's yeah it's the same although the uh Smith's one here has a slot for taking the bezel off which is not needed for the Gilbert because that is removed in a different way so I'll put this back onto the side and we can investigate our dateless Smith's alarm so um yeah this will be a fun thing to work on as a series hopefully it's not too far gone it feels like it might work it's still got all its knobs on it as well as the small alarm setting knob which i believe is actually an earlier feature i thought it was a later feature because the later ones have it as well but it's not the same uh the this earlier one is even smaller than the time setting knob and this 49 one has the larger alarm knob that the these have so yes i believe this might be a slightly earlier one but there's only one way to find out really isn't there so let's open her up and uh get into this this is a complete um first impression i'm quite excited okay here's my screwdriver uh so my squeaky chair I need to tighten it up all right so i'm just i'll get the lighting a bit better i'm just uh prizing open the bezel oh that kind of popped open and this bezel feels different as well. It feels smoother and slightly heavier. I don't know. Maybe it's a different plating. Maybe it's like a Smith's alarm from another dimension or something. Okay. The glass. Pretty standard glass. Okay. The face and hands. Okay. First off, uh, I'm noticing something which is slightly interesting. The screen printing on the dial is better. It's slightly more precise and fine and sharp. That's interesting. Okay, so I think now, instead of taking the hands off, I'll do that later. Let's have a look at the back. So if I undo these winders, I got this off eBay. Slightly more than I'd usually spend on one of these, but for research purposes, I'm not amassing a collection. I'm actually doing some proper research here. That's one. And we can finally crack the mystery of the dateless, uh, well, not dateless, but the Smith's alarms without the external date code stamped on the back. Yeah, the paint is a different kind of paint. Oh, okay, that's quite stiff. This one's coming off, though. Let's try and... Uh, oh, got that off. Yeah, usually these just pull off with your fingers. Uh, socket, socket, socket. Where is my Smith's socket? Uh, let's see if I can find it. No, that's not it. I'll see if I can find it. Okay, well, unfortunately, my Smith's uh, socket has gone AWOL, so I'll just use these pliers instead and be careful about it. Let's zoom in a bit. Get onto the action. I mean, half of these nuts are gone already. Be extra careful with them. Okay, not too bad. All right, now is the moment of truth. What will we see under here? Hopefully, a date code. Oh, I just noticed something else. The the uh, 
button on top's bigger as well. Or is it? No, it's the same size. Okay, I don't know why I seem to remember these having a smaller button on top. Right. Okay. Ah, well, I've noticed some changes straight away. Uh, the thing that's rattling around was the bell. But the keen-eyed, the eagle-eyed Smith's alarm person might notice the changes straight away. This is not the same movement plate design that we're used to. This is honestly groundbreaking. Okay, okay, right. The the things to look at um, are are um, this area here. I've noticed a change, and also this area here is different as well. Uh, I'm going to open up my 1949 one. Actually, let's see if we can find a date code first. See if this is old rule later. Yep, we got it. BDA. BDA there. I have finally found the A movement. I've done it. I have finally found the A movement. These movements had a final letter. The earliest one I'd found was B, but this is an A, so BDA. This is the A code right here. This is like new territory. This is extraordinary. This will definitely have a series because it's a new kind of movement. Uh, yeah, so let's compare it to our slightly later one. So BD is the date code. A is the type of uh, movement design. So BD, what would that be? Uh, if... Oh, this is confusing. We've got two date codes on this one. Uh, I believe there's the month and the year. So uh, BD, what would that be? Uh, so CFB was March 50. So if F is 1950, so DEF, this is a 1948. Uh, 1948, what was this? D, B. February February 1948, this one. And it is now my oldest Smith's Alarm. Okay, very, very cool. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, other movement here. And we can try and think about, first of all, what the changes are, but why they might have changed them. And that becomes part of our research. So let's put these over here. Yeah, I don't believe it. Honestly, I've been... Uh, looking for something like this in a long time and I was honestly expected to be disappointed like it would be just a 50s one without a um, code on it for some reason but no we've got a, a new early record with a brand new movement design I've never seen before so that is very very interesting and I'm very very happy about that and excited this seems to be a, I think I use some pretty good sockets on this to put it back together okay I mean pliers are fine if you don't slip <sighs> there we go actually I should be taking the front off now this is a radium one new dawn from 1949 so the code in this one 1249 it, that was a uh, M-E-B, I think, wasn't it? J-E-B is in there as well, but also M-E-B. We've got two codes, and I think the later one, M-E-B, is... Oh, God. I think the one we listened to. I'll just drop this. So, uh, luckily, <laughs> it was only from about an inch off the table, but uh, these things, because they're quite heavy, there's a lot of momentum in them. So let's put the... Uh, keep these hands where they are. And uh, undo it from here. Luckily, the glass is off. Don't think I've ever dropped something quite dramatically like that before. Right. So, our 1949 model. Okay, yes, this is what we're more used to. So, uh, let's get them both in shot. And I will 
raise them up. So, um, yes, we've got our 49 on the left and 48 on the right. So B versus A. Uh, so, yes, we have a few interesting features. The bell is uh, similar, just with a different rivet in it. I don't think we'll really look at that yet. But um, let's point out with this long file. The earlier one has an extra pin here. You see that? That pin there is to stop the alarm mainspring expanding enough to block the clockworks. I don't know why they ditched that later on. Maybe it was unnecessary because the spring is actually quite weak. Uh, and they've also got this feature here which does the same thing, which this one also has. The uh, actual wheel train itself looks identical. The, uh, it's still got the earlier click spring. Uh, how about the hammer and stopper? That appears to be similar, if not the same. Uh, what we do have, though, is if you look on the uh, pillars of the movement, on the top two ones, we have a little, a little thing there, a little pinch point there. And I believe that is to stop the um, spring tail riding up onto the pillar. Uh, yeah, that's it. I don't know why they ditched that later on, probably because it was unnecessary, because they managed just fine without them. See, there's a slightly later one. So I don't know whether these changes happened uh, all at once, from the A to the B, or they happened uh, over a course of time between early 48 and late 49. So let's take a look at the uh, plate corner then. So uh, as you can see, the early one on the right has a completely different shape. There's a lot less material there. Uh, that's on both plates as well. You can see the uh, front plate underneath. I presume they're otherwise the same. Uh, I can actually see another difference. Just in there. I don't know if you can see that. It's a black rectangle. Just in there, under the... Uh, I'll point to it. I don't think my camera's lighting is good enough, to be honest. All right, I'll uh, take the hands and thing off, and we can take a better look. Because I'll have to do it at some point. Uh, let's use the protector. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, we've got a bit of our protector there. And the alarm hand just popped off. So this should just lift off now, because the in all the later ones, at least, the um, hour pipe is attached to the dial and not to the movement. So this should just lift off. Prize around the dial to get the little tabs freed. Yep, there we go, there's the back of the dial. So the difference is, uh, we've still got those little markings for the minutes on the outside for some reason. I imagine that's for testing the clock without the dial on, which is a nice thoughtful feature. Uh, yeah, oh, that's there's a lot of wear there. We'll still work around it though, I'm sure. Actually, yes, this is incredibly worn out. Oh well. Um, we see there, that spring is different. Let's look at our 49er. And you can see, on the left, the uh, later one, has a riveted uh, trip spring. Whereas the earlier one has one that is not attached to the plate at all, it's just slotted in there. That's quite interesting, so they actually made it slightly harder to make. Maybe it wasn't harder to make. I mean, a rivet isn't particularly complicated, but there must have been some kind of drawback with this uh, older spring design. Everything else looks the same, though, apart from the plates. And, yeah, up there is also different. The uh, plate design It's a slightly less material as well, just like the uh, other one. And that explains this uh, interesting curved portion down here. You see there it curves up to give a bit more thickness to this area. Well, in the later one... 
they didn't have all that lost material around there, they still had that curved part. So that's quite interesting. So yeah, I think that's uh, our analysis over. And yes, even though it's very worn out, it's still kind of running. And hopefully, if we just get it back on track and oil it up and keep it as clean as possible, then it, the wear should not progress any further. And we will have still probably have a working clock, let's hope anyway. Uh, because yes, this, 19, this February 1948 Smith's Alarm with a Type A movement, as they probably were back in 1945 when I believe they started making them. So uh, yes, very, very cool stuff. So thank you for watching and sharing this very exciting little uh, journey. I'll put this all back together now.